You may have wondered, how are words recognized? A very simple way to think about it is template matching. You take the input that you see and you're going to match it to memory until you find a complete match. But the question is, do you match letters one at a time to find a word in memory or are you matching the whole word to information stored in memory? If your template matching process involves matching each letter of a word one at a time, you first have to identify R, and then O, and then S, and then E, and then you discover that those letters together make up the word rose. On the other hand, you might match the entire word as its entire template to information you've stored in memory and so it can happen as quickly as you might match a single letter. Research on how letters are recognized visually is one of the examples of research that was started before 1910 and then ignored largely during the time of the behaviorists and then rediscovered after the Cognitive Revolution. This kind of research was first done by Cattell in the 1800s and then later replicated and extended by Riker in the 1960s. Their research showed that individual letters are recognized faster when they're embedded in words than when they're presented in isolation by themselves or presented in a combination of letters that do not make a word. The study showed convincingly that individuals were faster to recognize a letter such as P and Jeep when it's part of a real word than when that same letter P is presented by itself or when it's presented in a sequence of letters that don't make a word. As you see on the right side of the screen, researchers call this kind of sequence of letters a non-word. There have now been tens of thousands of experiments conducted to try to understand how individual words are recognized visually. A popular task that is used to understand word perception is the lexical decision task. In such a task, a participant will view a series of letter sequences and then be asked to judge, is that letter combination a word that you know or is it a non-word? And then they make a manual response by pressing a key on a keyboard. In a lexical decision experiment, you might see the letter sequence B-R-E-A-D and be asked to respond quickly and accurately. Is it a word? Then press the left key. If it's not a word, press the right key. What would you do on this trial? The letters are C-H-O-I-B. You would likely press the right key because it doesn't make up a real word. What would you respond in this case? You have the letters T-H-R-E-W. Yep, that's a word. In a typical lexical decision experiment, you might receive 100 or 200 trials. Back in the late 1800s, James Cattell actually observed the fact that when participants are given real words and non-words to respond to, they always took longer to respond to the non-words, to say, no, that is not a word. One possible explanation is that for non-words, a person has to take that word template and match it to memory and go through exhaustively all the similar looking words that they know. Until they come to an end, they run out of similar looking words and they have to conclude that this in fact is not a word. In contrast, when the participant is perceiving a real word, they match that entire word to all the similar looking words that they have stored in memory, they're going to find a match at some point and then cease looking. And that is why the word responses tend to be faster than the non-word responses. The non-word responses involve going through the entire list of words that you know, matching and failing to find a match. One of the most robust effects in word processing experiments is the word frequency effect. And that refers to the fact that commonly experienced words are recognized faster than less common words. So a frequent word like computer would be recognized faster than a less frequent word like calculator. 
A second robust finding in the word perception literature is the orthographic neighborhood effect. An orthographic refers to orthography, the spelling of a word. So, words that share letters with lots of other words are recognized faster than words that share letters with few other words. Here are two words, swerve and plants. Which one do you think would be recognized faster? Which one shares letters with a larger number of words? Hint, how many words can you make out of the letters for swerve and plants? If you answered plants, you would be correct. The last effect that we'll talk about stemmed from the observation that some low-frequency words, infrequent words, seem to be processed more quickly than you would think when you compare them to other infrequent words. So for example, apple is a relatively infrequently used word. However, it seems to be perceived rather quickly by most people. It turns out that the age that you were when you learned specific words appears to matter. It appears to affect how quickly you can respond to those words when you're an adult. The age of acquisition effect refers to the fact that words learned early in life are processed faster and remembered better than words you learn later in life. Researchers have investigated the extent to which age of acquisition effects can be explained by just word frequency effects. So as you get older, you hear the words more and more and more. So if you look at people who are older adults versus younger adults, and you look at how quickly they respond to words that are learned earlier in life and later in life, you can quantify, you approximate, how often have they perceived each of the words in their lifetime, and to what extent is their response times due to the age that they learned the word versus how much they've been exposed to the word. And the results suggest that there is still a true age of acquisition effect even when you control for exposure, word frequency, that's all for now.